Welcome to Reagan and Friends, a podcast series hosted by the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Institute. Each month, we will share some behind the scenes moments and stories of President Reagan with some of his more famous friends. She's a world leader in every meaning of the word. And Nancy and I are proud to claim the Thatchers as our friends, just as America is proud to claim the United Kingdom as a friend and ally. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand to join me in expressing admiration and appreciation for Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and in raising a toast to Her Majesty the Queen. Margaret Thatcher was born Margaret Roberts in October 1925 in Grantham, a small market town in eastern England. Her home and early life played a large part in forming her political convictions. Her parents, Alfred and Beatrice Roberts, were Methodists. The social life of the family was lived largely within the close community of the local congregation, bounded by strong traditions of self-help, charitable work, and personal truthfulness. The Roberts family ran a grocery business, bringing up their two daughters in a flat over the shop. Margaret Roberts attended a local state school, and from there won a place at Oxford, where she studied chemistry at Somerville College from 1943 to 1947. But chemistry took second place to politics in Margaret Thatcher's future plans. Conservative politics had always been a feature of her home life. Her father was a local counselor in Grantham and talked through with her the issues of the day. She was elected president of the Student Conservative Association at Oxford and met many prominent politicians, making herself known to the leadership of her party at the time. In her mid-twenties, she ran as the conservative candidate for the strong labor seat of Dartford at the general elections of 1950 and 1951 winning national publicity as the youngest woman candidate in the country. She lost both times but cut the labor majority sharply and hugely enjoyed the experience of campaigning. Unlike many conservatives at that time, she had little difficulty getting a hearing from any audience and she spoke easily with force and confidence on issues that mattered to the voters. It was in Dartford too that she met her husband Dennis Thatcher, a local businessman who ran his family's firm before becoming an executive in the oil industry. They married in 1951. Twins, Mark and Carol, were born to the couple in 1953. In the 1950s, Margaret Thatcher trained as a lawyer specializing in taxation. She was elected to Parliament in 1959 as Member of Parliament for Finchley, a North London constituency, which she continued to represent until she was made a Member of the House of Lords as Baroness Thatcher in 1992. When the Conservatives returned to office in 1970 under the Premiership of Edward Heath, she achieved Cabinet rank as Education Secretary. It was in this position that she and Ronald Reagan first met, once at a luncheon in 1972, and then again in 1975. In April 1975, Ronald Reagan was touring Europe to increase his understanding of foreign politics. He met Education Secretary Thatcher and was supposed to only have a few moments of her time. Instead, they spoke for over 90 minutes. In his autobiography in American Life, Ronald Reagan said of the meeting, I liked her immediately. She was warm, feminine, gracious, and intelligent, and it was evident from our first words that we were soulmates when it came to reducing government and expanding economic freedom. When asked what he thought of the meeting, Ronald Reagan replied, I think she'd make a magnificent prime minister. The man speaking with Ronald Reagan remarked with disdain, my dear fellow, a woman prime minister? To which Ronald Reagan responded, England once had a queen named Victoria who did rather well. Following their meeting, Ronald Reagan wrote a letter to Margaret Thatcher, dated April 30, 1975, which is believed to be the first letter he ever wrote her. In the letter, he thanks her for the time she spent with him a few days earlier and invites her to California to meet with him and Mrs. Reagan, telling her that she has an enthusiastic supporter in him. And just a few years later, the Conservatives won a parliamentary majority of 43 at the general election in May 1975. The following day, Margaret Thatcher became Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, the first woman to hold such a role. In fact, for two decades, she was the only woman to lead a major Western democracy. She went on to win three successful general elections and served as British Prime Minister for more than 11 years, from 1979 through 1990, a record unmatched in the 20th century. When President Reagan became president in 1981, he knew he had a friend and ally in Margaret Thatcher. In fact, President Reagan held his first White House state dinner and his last White House state dinner, in honor of Margaret Thatcher. Following the February 1981 state dinner, Margaret Thatcher sent this letter to President Reagan, thanking him for the memorable occasion, and then in handwriting at the bottom of the letter she scribed, we shall never have a happier visit. It's always a pleasure to exchange views with Prime Minister Thatcher, 
a dear friend and the respected leader of one of America's closest allies. We've had a cordial discussion on a wide range of matters. Our conversations reflected the excellent relationship which exists between our two countries, as well as the warm friendship between Mrs. Thatcher and myself. Throughout the years, Margaret Thatcher's and Ronald Reagan's work relationship became more familiar. Notes were no longer addressed as Mr. President, but Dear Ron and Dear Margaret, like in this black and white photograph, signed to Ron and Nancy from Margaret and Dennis. President Reagan truly liked her and valued her advice. They complimented each other and made a formidable pair when it came to international negotiations. They were seated next to each other at the G7 summits where they often presented a unified front. The two would often trade notes behind the scenes on other leaders. President Reagan recorded in his diary how Prime Minister Thatcher had given him a heads up before a meeting with King Hussein of Jordan. When she was being challenged in Parliament, President Reagan would call her so she could hear a friendly voice. And when, on June 12, 1987, Margaret Thatcher was elected to a historic third term as Prime Minister, the first since 1820, President Reagan called to congratulate her, even though he had just finished his remarks on East-West relations at the Brandenburg Gate, where he challenged Mikhail Gorbachev to tear down this wall. After both left office, the two remained good friends. President Reagan awarded her with the Ronald Reagan Freedom Award, the Reagan Foundation's highest honor. And before the Reagan Library opened, Margaret Thatcher visited the still-being-constructed museum with President and Mrs. Reagan and toured the facility. In 1997, when asked about their connection, Margaret Thatcher said of Ronald Reagan, Fate decided that Ronnie should be in charge of the great United States when I was in charge politically in Britain. We had almost identical beliefs. From very different backgrounds, very different circumstances, we had come to this passionate belief that the world is not created by governments, it is created by the creativity of man. In our archives, we have many gifts that Margaret Thatcher and her family gifted President and Mrs. Reagan, including this sterling silver commemorative plate, which is engraved presented to President Reagan on the occasion of his visit to Great Britain, this mint dish gifted to him by her son Mark, and this trinket box gifted to him by her daughter Carol. And my mother had a reputation which was totally justified for working late into the night. And I said, hi, Mum, don't want to disturb you. What are you working on? She said, foreign policy, dear. So I said, oh, so she said, Ron Reagan and I will sound the bell for freedom in Europe. One of my mother's aides said, actually, they each believe so strongly, but together they were unstoppable. And it isn't just what they talked about doing. Anyone can talk. It's that they delivered. In 2002, Margaret Thatcher published a book entitled Statecraft, Strategies for a Changing World. In her book, Margaret Thatcher discussed global military, political, and economic challenges of the 21st century, offering guidance in moving forward. She dedicated the book to President Reagan, saying, This book is dedicated to Ronald Reagan, to whom the world owes so much. She then inscribed the book to him and gifted it, writing, Dear Ron and Nancy, I couldn't have dedicated this book to anyone else. You are always in our thoughts. With love, Margaret. Margaret Thatcher helped to reshape almost every aspect of British politics, reviving the economy, reforming outdated institutions, and reinvigorating the nation's foreign policy. In the process, Margaret Thatcher became one of the founders, with Ronald Reagan, of a school of conservative conviction politics, which has had a powerful and enduring impact on politics in Britain and the United States, and earned her a higher international profile than any British politician since Winston Churchill. When President Reagan passed away in 2004, Mrs. Reagan immediately turned to Margaret Thatcher to give one of his eulogies. We have lost a great president, a great American, and a great man. And I have lost a dear friend. Thank you for watching. Don't forget that when you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll be notified every time new videos and podcasts are added to our site, including our Reagan and Friends, Words to Live By, and Reagan Forum podcasts. And don't forget to follow at Ronald Reagan on Facebook and Twitter, as well as at Reagan Foundation on Instagram and YouTube.